That was our lead story, September 26, 2014, the day after the brutal beheading of one American woman and the attempted beheading of another inside a food packaging plant in Moore, Oklahoma. We quickly learned that the only suspect was this man, Alton Nolan, a recently released convict and convert to Islam. The vicious brutality of the attack shocked the entire country. And as we learn more about Nolan, his violent past, and his interest in radical Islam, the nation paid attention. Trace Gallagher brings us back to that terrible day in our new exclusive interview with the one woman who survived the attack. Trace. And Megan, the reason 30-year-old Alton Nolan was suspended from his job at the Vaughn Food Processing Plant is because two female employees filed a complaint that he'd made inappropriate religious and racist statements and that he, quote, didn't like white people. Immediately after being suspended, Nolan admitted going home, grabbing a large bladed knife, and returning to get revenge against those who complained. Here's the initial 911 call. Listen. Good morning, 911. Where's your emergency? Vaughn Foods, Moore, Oklahoma, 216 Northeast 12th Street. We have, What's going on there? We have someone attacking someone in the building. That someone was 54-year-old Colleen Hufford, who was attacked from behind and beheaded. The killer then went after his second targeted victim, 43-year-old Tracy Johnson. And now, for the first time, Johnson talks about her horrifying ordeal exclusively to the Kelly file. Listen. So he, he, got, he got to you, and what happened next? He started slicing my neck. And got a hold of my face, and got a hold of my right index finger, and wouldn't stop. And I'm screaming for help. And didn't think anybody was going to come around. But the CFO of Vaughn Foods, Mark Vaughn, who's both a reserve sheriff deputy and a member of their elite force, grabbed a rifle and opened fire, wounding Alton Nolan and stopping the attack. Vaughn's actions, as you see, gained him national attention and awards for heroism. Here he is. I'm very grateful that I was there. Uh, I don't know how I'd be mentally if I wasn't. I don't view myself as a hero. I view myself as, uh, as put in a position I was prepared prepared in the nick of time to save the life of, life of Tracy Johnson. Listen again. Do you think that he was trying to decapitate you? Yes, ma'am. He was actually in the process of beheading you? Yes. He got a millimeter away from my jugular cord. Where did he cut you? On the right side of my neck. Would you mind showing us? It's all right here. So did he, did he slice you or did he, did he stab you? Slice me. And he then... was slicing me. And other employees say that while Alton Nolan was slicing and attacking, he was shouting Arabic statements. We know that Nolan converted to Islam, taking the name Yaqim Israel, and that his social media footprint included a depiction of someone beheaded with a quote that read, I will instill terror in the hearts of unbelievers. Nolan also used his Facebook page to celebrate the attacks of 9-11, showing the Twin Towers burning and posting, quote, Islam will dominate the world and we need more Muslims for Allah. Jihad, jihad, jihad. Because of those and other statements, the FBI was brought in and the debate began over whether it was workplace violence or terrorism. Many believe it was terrorism cut and dried. The FBI tells the Kelly file it does not fit the federal definition of terrorism, but it is murder, which is what the DA charged. Tracy Johnson, by the way, still can't decide if terrorism or racism was the motivating factor. Megan. Trace, thank you. And tomorrow night, our exclusive interview with Tracy Johnson, the one woman who survived that attack that day in Moore, Oklahoma. She walks us through what happened to her and her reaction to this case not being treated as terror. Tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Don't miss that. Well, we also have breaking news tonight on Brian Williams and his future at NBC News. Howie Kurtz joins us right after this break.